Okay, we're talking about genetic material, DNA, and RNA molecules and its structure, or their structure. So what we've got right here, we've got a DNA molecule and we've got an RNA molecule. And our DNA has the structure of a double helix. So there's two strands, and let me get my pen. So there's two strands. Here is one strand, a nucleic acid right there. And here is another strand of nucleic acid. And they are bonded together. These two strands are bonded together right here in the center with hydrogen bonds that are attaching them together. In an RNA molecule, it is a single strand in a single helix. Okay, so we were looking at, in the last video, we were looking at the structure of a nucleic acid of DNA. So DNA is made up of nucleotides which is the monomer of DNA are these nucleotides so this picture right here is our double helix that has been unwound and flattened so that we can see who happens to be bonding with whom Okay, so here are our nucleotides, and they are made up of a phosphate group, a sugar, and in the case of DNA, it is a deoxyribose sugar, and nitrogenous bases. And the nitrogenous, the phosphate groups and the sugar are exactly the same in every nucleotide in DNA but the nitrogenous bases differ. There's four different types of nitrogenous bases. So cytosine, thymine, guanine, and adenine. Cytosine and thymine are pyrimidines, and guanine and adenine are called purines. And we'll see why. What's the difference between the two in a moment? Okay, so... <clears throat> The so characteristics of a DNA molecule. What kinds of things can we see looking at this right here? What can we notice? Well, um, first thing that we notice is that there's a repeating pattern right here of a sugar and a phosphate and 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 all of our um, uh, let's see nitrogenous bases are all pointing into the center and so that's where our hydrogen bonds are and the sugar and the phosphate groups compose our phosphate di dioxyribose dioxy backbone of the molecule Okay, and another thing that we can notice is that adenine always bonds, hydrogen bonds, with thymine. So we've got adenine, thymine there over here. We've got adenine, thymine down here. And we've got cytosine right here and guanine right here. And again, guanine and cytosine. So, and the things that you should notice between these nitrogenous bases, uh, adenine and guanine both have two rings, carbon rings in their molecule, and thymine and cytosine have single rings. 
So cytosine is a much smaller molecule. And adenine and guanine are much bigger molecules. So let's go back and take a look. So that's the difference between the two. Pyrimidines have one ring and purines have two rings. So that in our DNA molecule, we have a single ring always a nitrogenous base with a, with a single ring always bonding having a hydrogen bonds with a nitrogenous base with a double ring. So why? Why is that? Well what it allows is for our DNA molecule that you can see right here um, has a, a consistent diameter all the way down. It doesn't go smaller and then larger and then smaller and then larger. If you were to have adenine with hydrogen bonded to a guanine, that would make the DNA molecule a little bit wider there. And then if you had a cytosine, bonded say with a thymine then it would it would become narrow and then wide and narrow and wide but this way there's a consistent diameter of our DNA double helix throughout so purines the double rings are always bonded with a pyrimidine one ring Okay, so that's one of the characteristics of our DNA that we need to uh, we need to remember is that the diameter, so one, the diameter of our DNA is uniform. And also Adenine always bonds with thymine, and guanine always bonds with cytosine. And just have to memorize that. And the way I do it is, for some reason, just at the very beginning when I first took biology, um, the two words good cat and tiny ant came into my head, and it stuck with me forever. So, up until now, so that's how I remember it. So you can come up with any way you can just to remember which one bonds with which. Okay, so the other thing that we want to take a look at, the third characteristic, is that the two strands are anti-parallel. Anti parallel. Okay, and let's take a look at our sugars. And that'll help us figure out what that means, anti-parallel. So, um, in DNA, we have a deoxyribose sugar, so there's no oxygen here in this spot right here. So let's remind ourselves that there is a carbon at each of these corners right here. So these are one, two, three, four, five carbon sugars. And each carbon is numbered. This is one, two, three, four, five. And it's called prime so this is this position is called um, one prime p r i m e two prime and three prime four prime and five prime we number them so we can keep track of what is bonded to which carbon. 
Okay, so let's go back to our DNA strand. So you can see right here on this strand over here. If I can find my pen, there it is. Okay, so we have our one carbon over here, two carbon here, three prime carbon right here, four prime carbon right there. And at this point right here, there's also a carbon, and that is considered our five prime carbon. And that five prime carbon is then bonded to our phosphate group. And this is considered the five prime end because that's where the five prime carbon is. On this end down here, so here we've got again one prime, two prime, three prime, four prime, five prime. This is our three prime carbon right here. And that's why it's called our three prime end. And that three prime end has a hydroxyl group. And let me write that out. Hydroxyl group. Oops, wait, hydro yes. Um, okay, and now let's take a look at this strand over here, and you can see that it's different. Oops, there we go. It's opposite here. Um, so our sugar, you can see our oxygen is up on top over here. Our sugar is actually turned around so that our, we have our one prime carbon over here, two, three, four, and five. So you can see that our three prime end is sticking up on this strand instead of sticking down. So here's our hydroxyl group on the three prime end, and here is our phosphate group on the five prime end. And that's another way that helps me remember is five and phosphate. Just because they sound similar. It helps me remember that the phosphate group is always on the five prime end. But this helps you see how the direction of the strands are anti-parallel. So it's parallel but they're going in opposite directions. So this is going from five prime end to three prime end on this side, and then three prime end to five prime end on this side. And this is really important to understand when we start to look at how the DNA strands are replicated and how they're replicated um, in which direction, knowing which, um, which end um, is a three prime, which is the five prime. Okay. So there are two forms of DNA that we talk about. One is chromatin form, and the other is chromosome form. Okay, and I'm going to talk about that next in the uh, next video. Great. I hope you found that interesting.